Hatred is never ceased by hatred. Hatred is only ever ceased by love. This is an eternal law. These are the words of the Buddha. And you can see them in a book called the Dharmapada. And I always am fascinated by the Buddha's enlightenment experience because he had this incredible experience um, where he saw into the nature of mind, the nature of the universe, why we're here. And yet his very first teaching was around suffering, was around the importance and the necessity of alleviating suffering. And he said that suffering shows itself in all kinds of ways, different degrees, different expressions, um, different types of suffering. From the everyday individual suffering of, um, you know, not getting what you want or things not working out exactly as you hoped or an interaction that's difficult. You know, all the kind of stuff that goes on in our everyday lives, the sort of ups and downs. There's that level of suffering. And then there's the kind of big suffering of our lives, like, you know, like death, for example, loss. And then there's groups that suffer and global suffering. And we're seeing that right now playing out on our screens and social media, the suffering in Israel and Palestine. And it's uh, been tragic to see the devastation and the loss of life there. But the Buddha was very clear, is that, uh, you know, it's important to understand the causes and conditions of suffering that lead to something like a conflict that we're seeing. But that's not actually where uh, the end of suffering comes from. He had a great analogy of an arrow being shot randomly, an arrow comes in to your eye and you're distressed and you're suffering, it's painful and you want it gone. You don't want to be in that situation. And you can spend time thinking, well, how was I shot? Why was I shot? Who did it? And you want to blame that person. You even might want revenge, or you just might feel deeply sorry for yourself and feel like hopeless. So all of that reflection around the causes and conditions as to why it happening in the first place can actually shed light on a whole host of things, it can bring some awareness into the picture. But the decisive act happens when you decide to alleviate the suffering. That is where change actually really comes. When there's a point where you think, I want to alleviate the suffering. And uh, in that case, it's healing. You want healing. You want to transform the situation in some way for the better. So the Buddha said that we all suffer, every human being suffers on this planet. And we all want to be free of that. We all want for that to be transformed in some way. Whether it's an individual level or global level, we want it to be changed and transformed in some way. And so we have to then choose that act of alleviating it. In which case, in the, in the escalation of conflict that's happened, that first step is to say stop, to stop the war, to stop the violence. Because hatred is never ceased by more hatred. So that's the very first thing, is to stop the violence and actually decide that peace is possible. That peace is where we want to go. And of course, then there's the painstaking work of then going, well, what are the causes and conditions? Not that led up to that, because there's multiple truths and stories there and views. But actually, what are the causes and conditions that will help bring about peace and ongoing peace? And we've seen it historically that it can happen. There's enough will of the people, there's enough will of the leaders. There can be significant shifts that can bring about change. But the first thing is to want to stop the war, stop the violence, and then together recognise that we share this sort of human uh, family. We're in this human family where we do share suffering. We all want to be free. And we share that in common with everybody. 
and that every human life matters and that we can be in solidarity with others. So I'm very heartened to hear all the people that are working together on the different sides of the conflict, working together for peace. And we can do that for ourselves in our own lives, work for peace, for our own peace and for peace around us, and then wish that for the world in Israel and Palestine and in all the other places in the world where there's conflict as well. <laughs>